Hi, I'm Ginny Beyer. Welcome to my video series on working with border print fabrics. This is the third lesson in the series and it's all about working with border print triangles. Be sure to watch the first two lessons as they will contain information that will help you with this one as well. I hope you enjoy it. There are two types of triangles that work with the border prints. One is an equilateral triangle. That's where all sides are equal. The second and it's illustrating two different ones, are what's called isosceles triangles. These are triangles where two sides are equal and one is not. In order for the border print to work, you need two equal sides at least, or all three equal. But we're going to start with the equilateral triangle. This is the same triangle that was used in our hexagon. Six of these put together form a hexagon, but you can also work with these triangles individually. What you have to do to use a border print is find the midpoint of the triangle and break the triangle down into three identical triangles. I do this with a right angle. It could be a right angle triangle, a ruler with a right angle. You put one edge along the bottom of the shape, then line up that right angle till it meets at the peak, and then draw your line down through the middle, dividing that triangle in half. Now you want to turn the triangle so that you have a base again. Bring that right triangle back again and line it up with the tip and the bottom of the triangle and draw another line. This time, stop the line when it gets to the first one that we drew. Now you just take the same right angle or straight edge and draw a line from that midsection to the lower left corner. Now we have that triangle divided into three equal size identical triangles. We only need one template. You'll add a seam allowance to all sides of that triangle. Put in a mirror line as we discussed in previous lessons. And then line that mirror line up on some design, mirrored design, on the fabric itself. Now I mark some portion of the design directly on the template so I can use that as a guide as I cut two more identical triangles. Three of those go together to form this beautiful little medallion triangle. Depending on where you put the triangle template on the fabric, you can get several different designs. Here are just a few of the ones that you can get from this same border print. In the lesson on hexagons, we showed one way of putting these hexagons together was with an equilateral triangle. We used a dark fabric to do this. But what if, instead of the solid dark fabric, we put a border print triangle in here? And for this, I've designed a stripe especially for techniques such as this, where we want just one little narrow edging stripe. This is what I call my mini stripe, and it comes in a variety of different colors. So I place a template on this mini stripe, once again draw a design on it, so that I can get two more identical triangles to the first one. Then I sew those together to form this triangle, and then I will use that as the setting fabric between the hexagons. Here you see the one in here, and now what they all look like. And the comparison of the one without the border print and the one with the mini stripe. You can make this gigantic and do the Christmas tree skirt. This is a fun project at the holiday time. You determine the size of your triangle by how big you want the tree skirt by measuring from the tip of your tree outwards. In this case, I chose a triangle that was 30 inches per side. I broke it up into three smaller triangles the same way as I showed you previously and then centered a mirror line directly on the fabric. And I cut three of these identical, made sure that they all were exactly the same. And those came together to form a triangle. Now to make the tree skirt, you need six of these triangles. So we put them, separating them by about three inches or so, so that you'll have a hole in the middle. And then in the in-between places, you can put a plain fabric, a patchwork design. I chose to put the flying geese design in there. You leave one edge open, quilt it, and put it around your tree. 
We do have a pattern for this Christmas tree skirt on our website, and we also have kits available at JinnyBuyer.com. Now the other type of triangle that you can use for a border print is an isosceles triangle where two sides are the same length and the third is different. In this case, we need to divide the angle. The two lower angles on the lower left and the lower right have to be exactly divided in half. You don't want to have to do a lot of math to get that angle to work. So I find it easiest just to fold line B over to line A through the angle there and it automatically will divide the angle in exactly two parts. So when you do that, you'll see how that comes over and then you just draw a line along the fold line just past the center of the block. Now you can take your same right triangle, line it up, and draw a line from the tip until it meets that red dotted line. You finish the triangle by taking the straight edge and going from that center point over to the lower right hand edge. And now you'll see the triangle is divided into the A triangle like we had previously and now a B and a B R. We will make templates for those. There's the A, there's the B. You don't need a separate template for BR because it's just B flipped, B reversed. Now we'll place the triangle for the A template on a mirror image portion of the design. Now this is going to be a little different than before because what we're trying to do is getting a mirror image at the angles, not at the middle of the template. So I'm going to draw this red line to indicate some portion of the design. Then I have to line the other template, the B template, up with that angle and place that triangle onto the other template and mark the same line on this template that I marked on the other one. That will give me one mirror image angle and then for the B reversed piece I just flip the template and find that same part in a mirror imaged portion of the design. So I'll cut out my A, my B, and the BR and that comes together in this triangle. Now there's some interesting things you can do with this triangle. Julia, one of our staffers at Ginny Byer Studio, is making a series of these triangle pieces and she's not quite sure yet how she's going to set them together. She's just making them from leftover scraps from other projects. One possibility is to put them together like a thousand pyramid design. This is quite effective. Or you could put them into a block design. This is World Without End, block number 25 from our Quilters Block Library of Free Patterns. So you can take that same triangle, divide it up the way I just showed you, and make that border print elongated isosceles triangle. You could cut three more identical ones and put them in the block. And then the block, you can see the difference with and without the border print triangles. One of the things you could do is rather than using just the same fabric throughout on these, you could experiment and use up your scraps of border prints and make each one of those border print pieces different. It would make a very nice exhibit of all the different border prints you've used in all your projects. Here's another block using that right angle triangle. This is Dutch Windmills block 86 on our Quilters Design Library. You divide the triangle the same way. You're going to now get different templates, but you use the same system for cutting them out. And then you replace those black triangles with the border print triangles. And you can do the same thing. Wouldn't it be fun to do each one of those triangles from a different fabric or a little different place on the border print to showcase once again all the different border prints and what you can do with them in the triangles. So I hope you've enjoyed this video that shows you how to work with border print triangles. Stay tuned for the next lesson which will be working with diamonds. Mm -hmm.